page 14 over the fence is out here we get a little experience at hearing and playing broken chords with the pedal so we can hear what that sounds like I'll get to that later 6-8 time one sharp we're in the key of G major so make sure you can do the G major scale at least one octave up and down and while you're doing it go ahead and do the E minor scale because it also has one sharp in the key signature so just do both scales eighth note gets count and the hands are moving all over so good luck with this now one hand at a time at the beginning first measure the right hand is going to play those last three eighth notes in a, down here and then the right hand plays in the next major high G okay and then the, it's a one two three four five six one now come back to the grace note leave it out right now just reach up it's a, an octave here and then you do that again let's go down to the third line you're here one two three four rest and again an octave up now you have the notes written here but it has an ABA over them so that we're going to go up an octave so it's one two three four rest one rest then the ABA goes away so now we're here go on you're moving down You hear that same pattern going down? It's called a sequence. It can go up or down. Most of the time, not always, most of the time, it's nice to be able to finger each indication or each time that pattern happens. We like to finger it the same way. It's like you're starting here, third finger, and then fourth finger. If I do them all the, all the others the same way. Third finger, fourth, third finger fourth that's very common and it's a good idea when possible it's not always possible but yeah do that use that fingering and then going on last line on page 15 you're here the left hand plays the first three and then the right hand gets the E flat G and then going on it's F sharp they don't have to give you a natural sign there in the second major for the E because once you cross a bar line the flat's no good anymore but it doesn't hurt having it there so yeah go ahead and in case you're wondering why'd they do that well they're being nice to you and then come up during the rest because that last note with all those ledger lines on it well count them up how many ledger lines there's four i guess so well the first ledger line is here that's an a Second ledger line is a C, and that one you should definitely know. Third ledger line would be an E, and the fourth one then would be a G. So it's an octave. There. If you have to, you take a pencil and you write in a G, so you know the name of that note each time. Once it gets above three ledger lines, I typically have to figure it out. And if I have to figure it out, I write in the name of the note, so I don't have to keep figuring it out. Left hand at the beginning, you're here hand next major left hands up here and then the left hand gets these uh, treble clef it's one four because we want to connect it to the B flat C sharp so it's one two three four rest rest here and then you do that again third line down treble clef here it's an A a D and an F sharp you can figure it that way or that way as the book says it's up to you but try and connect it to the next measure as best you can I can't really if I do it that way I can almost do it but do the best you can that's a A C sharp G on that other one and then a D a G a sharp and a C remember we're in treble clef this is the third line down last measure here and then a G and a B and then it, I've got that chord again. Now, you get bass clef there. You see the bass clef at the end of the line? So on page 15, the left hand's in bass clef. Now it's a, a D, a sharp C. And then, and then one, two, three, four. And then the broken chord again. Now I get that. Let's go down to the last line. Treble clef, it is a B flat, C sharp. They want 4-2? Uh, I don't know. 
Now, when I first figure out a fingering, I like to try and play it all legato. But here we have a problem going from here to here. If I can figure that legato fine. The problem is then I got a D coming up here and it doesn't work. So go ahead and figure it the way they're telling you to here, and then the second finger is going to go to here. That's the way you can connect it. It works in this situation. I'll, I'll explain it a little more later on. But right now, go ahead and do a two, four, four, and then a two, one, and then the last measure here, and that last note is a G. It's below the second ledger line. Well, one ledger line is middle C. You know that because we're in treble clef here. And then two ledger lines is an A, so that's a G. Put the hands together. This needs to be nice and evenly, rhythmically. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get the idea. Third line down. You're here. Both hands come up. It's a rest. Here the left hand stays down, so it's Get the ideas. You go through and put the hands together. Then we can add the articulation in these grace notes. Well, starting out slurred. And then the slur. The rest tell you to lift up, so that's fine. And the grace notes, remember, is it just a quick little note right before the note. Here. I lift both hands the same. And so forth. Third line down. Uh, now, on fourth line down, that's staccato on both hands. And so the start third line down, last measure. Don't accent that, just light, it's light. And they don't tell you to, I think that's an error. In the last measure on page 14 in the left hand, that should be a staccato. So just you can put in a little dot underneath that chord. For the most part, that's the articulation. Dynamic, well, it's up to you. You have to decide how loud and soft things are, but moderately soft at the beginning, it's just sort of soft. And when you get to the third major, that's sort of soft. The left hand needs to be very soft. And you can't, on the next line, once you play a note, you can't crescendo on a piano. So all it's telling you is the next note is going to be forzando, which is a very heavy accent. Very, and you can't do anything with the left hand because it's just going to die away. So it's here and then loud. I put a lot of weight on it. It's a ball. I'm just ball, and I'm doing that, and I put a lot of weight on it. So it's here because this is moderately soft, and this uh, there. And then moderately soft again. And then the left hand needs to be very soft. And the third line down, that's not sforzando anymore, it's just an accent, so it's not as loud. And then soft in the right hand, very soft in the left. And then page 15. First line, last measure, you're loud in the right hand. The left hand can be sort of moderately loud. And moderately soft. You get the idea. At the last line on page 15, you're moderately soft here. But there's an accent on that, so you that's sort of like moderately loud. And you hang on to that for the fermata for as long as you think it needs to be done. When I do it with a metronome, I'll double it, so I'll just hold it for six counts instead of three. And then go on, you're still moderately soft here in the right hand. Left hand soft. 
and you're going to go up a little bit. Doesn't say how much. Go up to about a moderately loud. And both hands are sports sound loud. And this, different people play it differently. It's going to it's going to be up to you. You can play it where these notes are together, or you can play it where these notes are together. That happens so quick you can't really tell. So I play it on the beat, so I play it with it. But you can play. Most people would play it before the beat. I don't like it before the beat, so I play it on the beat. Then the speed. Well, moderato, but that's the feel of it. Keep in mind, this is a baseball game, and they're having fun. It's a, it's a nice. Something like that. If that's your moderato, it's got one, two, three. That's not a moderato pulse. But we're not talking about the speed of the beat. We're talking about the overall feel of the piece. Just a nice, even. It's not fast or slow. It's somewhere in the middle somewhere. I'll leave that up to you and your teachers to how fast you go. There is a, a, a poco writ there at the bottom of page 15. So you're going to slow down a little bit. That way people can enjoy that chord a little longer. Isn't that lovely? And then the odd tempo means take off again. Now there's a couple ways of interpreting an odd tempo. But in this piece, just take off again. It's just don't. I'll get to the other one later on when we get to a piece where it's more appropriate to use the other one. Keep you in suspense. Now once you have a handle on that, and the dynamics and everything, and it's speed and it's all flowing, then we add the pedal. We add the pedal last. Don't be in a hurry to add the pedal. It's going to be the same thing I'm going to, that we did before. We're going to push the pedal down right after we play the first note. And we'll lift the pedal with the hands at the end of the second measure. So there's a little silence before we go to the third measure. It's kind of like taking a breath. Just, just a little bit of silence. And it's that way every time you see the pedal used, it's only being used on these broken chords. So the notes go down first and then the pedal. And I'm going to hold the pedal down all the way through the first two measures. And then I'm going to lift it up right up with the hands. So there's just a little bit of silence before I go on. And throughout this piece, the pedal's done the same way. Push the note down first and then the pedal. And then lift it up with the hands before you go on. Well, then in the last measure, bottom of page 15, you're here. Push the pedal down after you play the notes and lift it up right when you play the staccato notes. So we have staccato notes because if you don't lift the pedal up, you won't get a staccato. And again, it's important to get the idea of what it sounds like with the pedal and what it sounds like without the pedal so you understand the difference. So you learn it without pedal and listen. And then put the pedal and hear the difference. Hear the difference? That's why it's called a loud pedal sometimes, because it tends to want to, the overtones tend to want to make louder. It's a fuller sound. It doesn't necessarily need to be a louder sound. So you have to be careful. Maybe on the MP you tone that down maybe to a P, just a soft, because the pedal tends to make it loud. So the overtones fills it out. So experiment with it, because you have to make these little adjustments when you add the pedal, but you have to listen carefully in order to make the, the adjustment. to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics. I will do the pedaling. So I'll give a six cast. Let's just do it slowly together. One, two, three, four.
ready, go. Rest, rest. Mm -hmm. 